In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can calculate areas under grass. So we're going to be using integration and integrals to make sure you're familiar with integration, being able to uh, integrate different functions. So using this, we can calculate the area under any type of function. So even if it's quite complicated, we can use this integration to be able to solve the area. And this has many useful applications. So firstly, if we have a graph such as this, looking like a triangle, and we had to find we could make a triangle, then we can work out the area just by using base times height times a half. So that's quite simple. However, you can get functions functions that look like this, where you can't easily make any shape. So if you had to find the area between this point and this point, then it would be quite hard to calculate. And then this is when integration comes in. So the easiest way is to do a worked example through a relatively basic question. So we have here the line y equals 4, the function fx is equal to 4. We want to calculate this area here. So that's between 2, 5, and the graph 4, and the axis, so the x-axis. So we want to calculate this area here. So what we can do is we find the definite integral. So that means we integrate the function, so whatever fx is, dx. And then we have these two, point here, two points here, which are called the terminals, so B and A. So with regards to here, we wanted to find between f uh, 5 and 2. So these are the terminals, 5 and 2. So we're going to get 5, 2, fx, dx. And this will tell us the area. So how do we solve this, and what does this actually mean? What it means is we first integrate it. So we calculate as if there wasn't the 5 and the 2 there. So fx dx. So the function is 4 dx. So this is going to give us 4x. So that means we're going to get now 4x, 5, and 2. So we go from this step to this step. We move the terminals from there up to here. And we have here, which is um, the antiderivative of whatever the fx was. So we found the integral. And we have 4x. And then we sub the point 5 in, so we get 4 times 5. So whatever function is inside here, whatever the x terms are, we sub x, we sub whatever this term in here as x. So if we'll set such as 4x squared, we get 4 times 5 squared, so 25 times 4, which would equal 100. But this time it's 4x with 5. So it's going to give us 20, so 4 times 5. And then what we do here is we minus 4 times 2. So then we sub in 2 as x. So x is equal to 2. And this will give us 20 minus 8, which will equal 12. So that area there would be 12 units squared. So looking at this, this area here will be 12 units squared. Now, because this is a straight line, we could just make a square and calculate it, which would be a bit easier. So what's the width? Well, the width is 5 minus 2, so it's 3. The height is 4. So what's the area? Well, it's just base times height. So 4 times 3, which equals 12 units squared. So we've got the exact same answer using making it a square and also using this integration method here. So what about plus c? Well, if you looked in the pre remembered in the previous example, I didn't actually have any plus c there, but I'm integrating. So we had here we had b a f x d x, and this when we integrated it, we didn't have plus c. The reason is that when we do integrate, we do have a plus c, but using the previous example, or making new examples, so f x is equal to three x squared. We integrate 3x squared dx, and then we're going to get x to the 3, so it's just going to be x to the 3 plus c. So that means we're going to get x to the 3 plus c, b, a. So this is going to equal b cubed plus c minus a cubed plus c. So whatever the c value is, we're going to get c minus c, and they're going to cancel. So the answer would just be b cubed minus a cubed, where the b and a values are known. So even if a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0, 
it won't affect the C because we're not changing the C, we're only subbing in whatever the X value is. So there's always going to be a plus C in both cases, so plus C here, and then this plus C, but due to the negative sign, we're going to get minus C. So it'll be C minus C, which will equal zero. So the constant, or well, this plus C here, will not affect the area, and then that's often why we just forget about it and we don't write it in. So what are the properties of the definite integral? So here we have b a f x d x is equal to negative a b f x d x. So when you swap the terminals, you can get you can swap them and you'll get a negative sign out the front. So using the previous example, we can see why that's the case. Because when you go from f x d x b a, we get uh, the integral of f x d x uh, b minus the integral of, and then a. So if we swap these integrals around, then we're going to get dot 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 a minus dot 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 b. And this is the same as just putting a negative, because if you put a negative out the front, then we'd get the negative b, and then negative negative would make a positive a. So this is quite a useful property. Um, at the moment, you may not see why, but when you see some later examples where you can see that the sign does matter, being able to do this and quickly take a negative out can help with your calculations. So another unusual property is that BAFXDX is equal to CAFXDX plus BCFXDX, where C is more greater than A but less than B. So what this means is that visually, you have the point here A, you have the point here B, and then let's say there's a point here C. So we can calculate this area here, or we'll calculate the definite integral, which is also equal to firstly calculating CA, which is this area here, and then adding it to this area here, which is there. It also follows all the other properties of indefinite integrals. So if you're not familiar with those, go over them again. However, just a reminder, some of them are such as when you have k inside the fx dx and then ba, then you can take the constant out. So all the indefinite integral properties that you've learned can also apply to these definite integrals as well. So going through another example, just so you can see the method, here we're going to calculate the definite integral, so 4, 1, 2x squared dx. So the first step is to actually calculate this, 2x squared. So we have 2x squared dx. So this, we add 1 to the power, so 2 plus 1 is 3. Then we divide by the new power, so we get 2 on 3x cubed. And this would have the plus c, but we don't have to worry about it when we're calculating it here. So we have 2 on 3x squared, and then these terminals go here, 4, 1. So we sub in the first terminal, so we get 2 on 3, oh, so that should be instead of 2, that's a 3. And then 4 cubed, so that's times 64, minus, sub 1 in, 2 on 3. So this will give us 2 times 64, so 128 on 3, minus 2 on 3, to give us 125 on 3. So what do we do here? Oh, and then check, can you simplify this? Can 125 d be divisible by 3? Well, a quick way to check is 120 divided by 3, that works, that is divisible. However, 123, that means it would, 126 would, but 125, it's not going to be. So with this process, we calculate the, uh, the integrator, whatever the function is inside, put it in here, and then make sure you sub in the first point, and then sub in the f second point here, just remember this minus sign there. So 128 minus... Oh. Okay, I've actually made a mistake. So instead of 128 minus 2, it's obviously not 125, but rather it's going to be 126. So 8 minus 2 is 6. So we get 126 on 3. And so that is actually going to be divisible by 3. So 120 on 3 is equal to 40. And then 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So therefore, this is going to equal 42 here. 
So 4, 1, 2x squared dx. So the same process applies. Just make sure you don't make the mistake 128 minus 2 is 125. So that's 126 divided by 3. Then we're going to get 42 as the answer because 3 times 42 gives us 126. That's the answer, answer to that. So one important thing when calculating the area, when relating the definite integral to area, is that sine does affect the definite integral. So what I mean by this is if we have a graph here, and we have a function such as this, and we calculate the area between, or the definite integral between this point here and this point here, or just any sort of negative y value, so there, then we're actually going to get, let's say the area was 14, then the definite integral of, let's say, negative 2, negative 5, so negative 2, negative 5, fx dx would equal negative 15, or whatever the area is, but it would have a negative sign. So that means when y value is negative, and you calculate the area when it's below the graph, so the graph could also be Something like that. So the x values could be positive, so I don't care about the x values, but we look at the y values. So if we calculate this area here, let's say between 10 and 8, then we'd still get a negative value. dx would equal negative 10. And so it's important when calculating the area that you then have to take the modulus of negative 10, make it positive, and then we'll get 10 units squared. Because obviously area is going to be a positive number. So it's been quite important to realize this, and I'll talk about this more in the next video.